We're making one kilowatt. It is 10 past 8 in the morning. Well, I needed 7% state of charge only. Look at this. Almost 1.1 kilowatt from the west roof. Which is literally the only solar site we have connected at the moment. But let's have a look how it looks like. Look at this, lots of shading here. So this is one, two, two and a half strings in the sun. Well, the sun is coming from this angle, so it's a very, very shallow angle on the panels at the moment. And we are making, I can't believe it, we are making already one kilowatts. This is already 1100 watts. Well, guys, anyway, we'll come back to another video here from the off-grid garage in sunny, sunny Australia. Is that sunny? Sunny enough? It is amazing, right? We are in the middle of spring. And I'm going to follow the West Roof solar installation today and see how much power it generates at different times of the day. I had a, I had a sneak peek this morning when I woke up on the mobile phone already. It was like 6.30 or something and we had already 350 watts from the solar. <laughs> I said, oh my god. And this is just one side covered with solar panels. Yeah, we will have this side and the other side and this shed as well there. So four times 300, that, that's an insane amount of power. 8 o'clock, 1 kilowatts. Look at all these fingerprints on there. Disgusting. Jake! So I'm just doing another test with the Phono uh, solar panel. I just pulled this out of the garage, so it should be fairly cool still. And let's see. 502 watts but the angle is again not optimal should be more this direction give me a second here five hundred and where is it there yeah. five hundred and forty six watts Yeah, that is so cool that this one has a backlight. 544 watts, and not even super 100% accurate. Look at this, almost 14 amps we are getting from this panel at 40 volts. So it is now 10 o'clock and we have almost 1.6 kilowatts from the system. I've seen two kilowatts already. See how the shading situation is so far it is unchanged two strings in full sun one half and the other two are shaded with a bit of sunlight yeah depending where the sun comes through so and uh, today we have made already 4.2 kilowatt hours not too shabby for just a few hours of running this roof okay there's a bit of help from the pool fence system as well but as you can see here we are making only 110 watts from the pool system and it was like 30 or 35 watts this morning so we can actually we should potentially disconnect this one here as long as the other roofs are not connected yet i'll leave the pool fence system as it is it contributes a bit i need all the power i can get at the moment we're down to 11 percent slowly recharging nice Guess what? When we are doing solar panel testing, we've got... There were no clouds for the last two days. And today is the first day I can actually test something. Clouds. So we have now all panels in full sun. The angle is almost from the top. It's not optimal angle, but good enough, I think. I'll just turn on the screen recorder, otherwise we can't see anything. Okay, west roof, 4 kilowatt, and we are getting 3.7 out of it. This is in line with the prediction we made a couple of videos ago when we uh, compared the two panels in the driveway we had in series connected to the battery and just multiplied this by 5 because we've got now 5 times the situation as we had there on the driveway. And we can see 3.7 kilowatts. I think we predicted 3.5 or something, but 
you know that was just a rough calculation and depending on the weather and everything temperatures so we are charging with almost 70 amps into the battery from one roof now this is maxing out the solar charge controller already 70 amps is maximum and then it caps the current with the old installation when we had three panels in a row and five of these strings then in parallel um, the maximum I could ever see was like 2.5 2.6 kilowatts in these conditions I mean except from these cloud corner situations you know but under normal conditions under normal sunny conditions like now when there are no clouds uh, 2.5 2.6 kilowatts I can measure but here we can see now oh we can only see 1200 <laughs> there's this tiny cloud I can't believe it just go away go away come on this almost max it out wow look at this 3.7 70 amps we are on max so is it actually worth getting a larger solar charge controller for these panels now like 150 85 which can do 85 amps then into the battery we would get a bit more power then but does it justify the extra costs probably not that would be something to test actually if we can get one we can replace one of the 70 amp controllers with an 85 amp controller and see what the difference is because we will have exactly the same installation on the east roof as well and we can really compare these two and see if it makes sense to go with a larger controller but you can actually over paneling these victron controllers by 130 percent they will just cap the current at 70 amps or 85 amps whatever controller you have so you're maxing out the controller all the time then like almost right now let's see how hot it gets let's get the infrared camera out and have a look at the controller it'd be interesting to see with four almost four kilowatts yeah yeah clouds coming shit okay there we again we are capped at 70 amps 3.7 kilowatts from this one controller and here we've got the infrared picture of it as well we can we see 47 degrees of the case and if we go here to the terminals for example now you can see there 43 at the terminals ah yeah they are hand warm that's all right what do we have from solar so 50 amps so 50 amps coming in here with a 16 millimeter cable and 70 amps going out on the 25 millimeter cable these ones the 25s on the left have ferrules and the 16 millimeters don't can we see a difference already here it looks like we have a bit more heat building up on this side then over here but then again we've got 20 amps more so we have to wait until all the solar charge controllers are connected and I will make a dedicated video about crimping these cables with ferrules or put them in straight as strained cables into these terminals here and then see what the difference is and you can see these two hotspots these bright white shining areas there on the front here this is where the MOSFETs or the inductors sit, I guess. Yeah, and this is now at 11 o'clock, but it's running like this for, for the last half an hour, 45 minutes or so. This is when the shading disappears now in springtime here, and we have full sun on the garage and on all roofs now. So 70 amps, 70 amps, a bit less from these two, probably 60 and 60 amps, 40 and 260 amps altogether when we have sun on all roofs this will be only in around noon time because then the carport controller will throttle down already there will be shading coming and we will see full sun on the big shed next door then so i'm not actually sure if we can see both of them at the same time running full power so we are now back on the roof and we can see we are making still 2.6 2.5 kilowatt but the shading is coming back now for the afternoon now it is almost two o'clock two p.m and the same here on the carport shading comes back slowly will creep in but as you can see you can see the big shed 
full of sunshine. It'll be good. We're still pushing 48 amps into the battery here. So if you have a look at the history so far, we have made 14.5 kilowatt hours today. And it was mostly cloudy actually. It just cleared up a little bit again. Sun is coming out. Yeah, so far seems to work fine. So we are now back on the roof, as you can see. <laughs> and um, we're still making 1.4 kilowatts here in the afternoon. It is uh, 3.30 and I must say I'm really impressed. Still 1.3. So this one is shaded. This one is half shaded. And these two are shaded. There's only one panel and a bit of mix, whatever. 1.4 kilowatts still. Amazing. See the shed over there, almost in full sun. Carport gets a lot of sun. East roof here, almost in full sun as well. Bad angle though. And we have now 9.35 p.m. and we are charging with zero watts. <laughs> it is the late night show again, guys. So yeah, there was not too much happening anymore today because, because shortly after midday, big clouds came in and we didn't see the sun anymore. So I couldn't really do any more testing on the roof with the new solar panels. But I want to show you something. But before I want to show you something, um, let's clean up this mess here. There are so many old solar charge controllers now in this list here. I have to click actually on show all to, to see them all. So at the moment we only have the, the pull fence system connected and the new west roof with 4 kilowatt peak. Okay, let's go into our device list and have a look what we have. So the Hyundai 800 watt peak controller we don't have anymore. We can delete this device. Gone. The East Roof 4 kilowatt peak, yes, we still have this device, but it's not turned on because there's no solar installed yet. But the old East Roof controller, delete. Yeah, see, it says the data is still available and will show up again when we reconnect the device, but, well, we won't. Delete. Okay, and this is the old West Roof controller. We can delete. So that's um, that's basically it, right? The pool fence is still there, the west roof is there, the east roof is there but not connected. The Phoenix is still there. I don't know why it says last month I've charged the vehicle today and it was turned on. Okay, anyway, we go back to the dashboard. Flying foxes. And we have only the east roof, the pool fence and the west roof at the moment. And once they connect the carport and the big shed as well, there will be two more solar charge controllers and then we will remove the pool fence system here from the off-grid garage. And hopefully I don't need it next winter anymore. Because this is the whole purpose of going so big. So people have also asked, how have I sized my solar charge controllers to these panels here? How do I know which solar charge controller will actually work with these panels and this setup what I have at the moment here? The easiest way and the most fun way is to go to the MPPT sizing calculator on the Victron website. I'll link this down below. And you basically type in the information of your solar panel, all the data of the sticker. So the open circuit voltage, the short current, the voltage in the maximum power point and the current in the maximum power point and also the temperature coefficient. And these are all the information for the Hyundai shingle panels. I have set two of them in series as we have and five of these strings in parallel. If you scroll all the way down, you can also set your location and it gives you a forecast daily yield. And here on the y-axis it gives you the kilowatt hours per day and down here on the x-axis it gives you the month january february march and so on and obviously here in australia in may june and july we have the lowest solar yield we are now at beginning of november and we should actually see around 18 maybe a bit more than 18 kilowatt hours 
And of course, this is all calculated for the optimal orientation of your solar panels. So here for Australia, they would be facing north with about 30 degrees angle. So around 18 kilowatt hours we can expect from this setup with two panels in series and five of these strings in parallel. And if we have a quick look on the mobile phone now for the west roof 4 kilowatt peak, this is the controller. And we want to have a look at how much power we have actually made today. So we click on the history here in the app and we can see we have made 17.12 kilowatt hours today. That is amazing. This is almost what they forecasted here on their calculator. And as you have seen, we had clouds in the afternoon here. And this forecasted calculation here on this website not only considers the optimal angle and orientation, but also, of course, full sunshine, no clouds, no shading. And this is the real live data here from today. Sunny in the morning, cloudy in the afternoon and still 17.12. So I assume if we have a full sunny day, we would probably make close to 25 kilowatt hours with this system just on the new west roof here. Yeah, this is not the full system we are building. This is just one roof out of four. So under really, really good conditions, we could potentially see a yield of around 100 kilowatt hours per day with this system. Okay, I, maybe I'm a bit too optimistic here now, but we probably see 75 to 80 kilowatt hours under optimal conditions then. So I'm really keen to find out. Okay, guys, I think this was our first day here, our first observation of the new West Roof with the, um, with the Hyundai shingled panels. And I must say, so far, I'm really impressed. It maxes out the solar charge controller most of the time, running on 70 amps. That is already maximum impressive. And of course, we will do more testing once all the other roofs have been connected. And then we are going to find out if this whole system works as designed or if we have to make some changes. I believe we have to make some changes, especially with the BMSs. We may face some serious issues here. But for now, guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel. Thank you very much to all these amazing people who are supporting the channel financially as well and buying me a beer from time to time. That is very much appreciated. And until the next video, guys, stay charged, stay safe, and, well, I guess see you tomorrow then, right? Thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye-bye.